Good afternoon, Daiwa fans. Mark Mills here. I am the field marketing manager for Daiwa. I want to welcome you guys all to day two of the Daiwa new product showcase here. Um, we're here to kind of show you all the new products. A lot of you guys tuned in yesterday. You got to see all of our reels and stuff. Well, today is day two, so we're going to be going through all of our rods. Um, it'll be myself and Alex Planbeck, and I'll introduce him here in a second. We are practicing social distancing, so you'll see me come on the screen and off the screen. We'll be going back and forth. With that being said, if you guys uh, want to ask questions or anything of that nature or comment, go to the uh, Daiwa USA YouTube page. Um, you can post your comments. We'll try and answer what we can. We had some great questions yesterday. Uh, but today's actually the rod day, and we're going to start going through all the new rods that we're introducing. Uh, tomorrow, we'll be going through some other stuff uh, when it comes to gear and line and everything else. But with that being said, I'm going to introduce you to Alex Planbeck. And come on in, Alex. How's it going, guys? Uh, Alex Planbeck here, West Coast, West Coast and Southwest Regional Sales Manager, uh, here to talk to you guys about the new Proteus wind rods we have. Um, here is a new Proteus wind for 2020. If you guys are familiar, we have the wind grip uh, in the blue model right now. Those are staying in line, so we're adding an additional series in this black and gray camo to match the new Lexa wind that we recently launched. These are going to range in price from $229 to $279. These have Fuji Fazlite guides on them, really nice guides, very durable, uh, great for any braided lines, not going to rust on you, not going to break on you, uh, very strong, very rigid. Um, also has that really nice black and gray wind grip, very tacky, very sticky, um, great for fishing, saltwater conditions where your hands are wet, um, scaly, slimy, anything like that, you're going to get a really nice grip on this rod. Also has our Braiding X technology and our X45 technology. What that does is it actually reduces the blank twist in this rod, so you're not gonna get as much twist as you would with a traditional rod. The main benefits of that is when you're casting, you're gonna get a more accurate cast, and when you're, on pulling, when you're pulling on fish, you're not gonna get any uh, twist in the rod either. So these are available in both spinning and casting models. They're gonna range from 229 to 279. These will be available in July. Uh, so check out the new Proteus wind rods. Alrighty, in addition to the Proteus wind rods, we are uh, launching a new series of Proteus rods as well. These are going to be all family priced at $199. We do have a tuna model that we're adding in. I'll talk a little bit about that. That's going to be at a higher price point at $349.99. All the Proteus rods have a five-year warranty. The wind rods are going to come with that limited lifetime warranty. And then all the new Proteus rods will have a five-year warranty against any manufacturer's defects. These also have that really nice Fuji reel seat as the Proteus wind rods do. Double locking reel seat so you're not going to have your reel loosen up on you on your trip. Uh, no issues with that. Nice shrink tube grip here. Fuji Fazlite guides. This also has our braiding egg technology as well. So main difference between the wind and the Proteus is going to be that warranty and then also the wind grip um, versus that standard shrink tube grip on here. Uh, we do have a tuna rod that I mentioned. It's going to look a little bit different than this. It has a little bit upgraded foregrip, a little bit more durable. It's going to be a 7 foot 4 XXXH rod. Matches nicely with some of the new lever drags that we launched. That one's going to come in at $349.99 and have a 5 year warranty as well. Uh, that Proteus tuna rod, that 7 foot 4, is going to arrive sometime in the fall. So definitely check out the new Proteus rods. Uh, it's going to be a nice staple for Daiwa here in the future. Uh, very popular with the saltwater anglers all across the country. Um, check out the new Proteus wind and Proteus rods. Thanks, Alex. How are you guys doing? Um, I'm going to kind of switch sides over here. We're going to talk about some of the new uh, pretty much East Coast uh, rods that we spent developing. Um, I myself work with our team uh, at Daiwa, and we also work with about nine dealers. Last year, I think I went to Florida almost 10 times to work on a, an East Coast rod, really to what the dealers wanted, what the guides wanted, what the Kingfish tournament guys wanted, what the Kingfish sail, uh, the Sailfish guys wanted. So we ended up coming up with a, a series here. Um, let me spin this around so you guys can try and see the logo. Called Dark Water, uh, a really great looking rod. Um, it's actually a flat black blank, um, little blue highlights through here as you guys can see here on that. Um, but really the whole Dark Water rod series um, we have our boat rods. Uh, every boat rod that we actually have 
has a Duraha, Dorado, Mahi Mahi, Dolphin Fish, what you want on it. But over and above the boat rods, we've also added Kingfish rods. Um, they have a Kingfish on them. They're also labeled as KF as far as Kingfish. And Sailfish rods with a Sailfish on them, and that's FS for Sailfish. Um, let me get a little bit into the blank construction. There's a lot of technology that we did with this. So what we do is for the blank construction on these rods, we use our uh, HVS, which is a high volume fiber. Um, we use a lot less resin, makes it much lighter, more durable, feels better in your hands. So we've used that through all the different series. Um, some of the uh, kingfish rods and sailfish rods have a little bit more glass in them. Um, we did that for the different bends that you need for those models. Um, we actually use all Fuji guides on this. Um, we also have uh, the rubber, rubber butt caps here and gimbal butt caps on the selected models. Um, these rods will all have a five-year warranty, but I'm going to kind of pick one of these rods up and kind of show you where we do some differences here. So as you can see here, these are the boat rods. All the boat rods have EVA grips on the rear grip, and they've got the power lift kind of triangles type grip through here. Feels real good on your hands with the boat rods. We also use heavy-duty guides. You can see the guide train is very heavy-duty. Um, for one, helps, you know, pulling on fish. Um, if it falls or dings, you don't knock guides out. So we went to an extra heavy-duty guide there with big guides as well all the way through the rod. What that's going to do is allow you to get big knots through them and everything else as far as uh, any types of leaders or splicing. You can see we've added a big thick hook keeper. Um, and actually, it's a very light rod. We also have our Daiwa uh, uh, reel seat on here as well. Um, it actually has a lockdown reel seat. So once you have it locked to one section, you slide this up, and that locks it. That keeps it from moving down. You're going to see some fairly parabolic actions in this. Now, on both the kingfish and sailfish rods, you're going to see we've done a couple different things too, mainly in the rear grip area. So you're going to see that we went to a true carbon slick butt. Um, there's a couple different slick butts that are out on the market. Um, I really didn't like the nylon ones. They're very heavy, kind of cumbersome. So we, we talked to the guys, and we did a real nice carbon fiber slick butt. I don't know if you can see it in the camera there. We added some nice winding chucks through here and here. Uh, gives it a nice real high-end appeal, but we really work closely with the Kingfish and the Sailfish tournament guys to do the right actions, the right bends. As you can see, um, on the Sailfish rods, we use a little bit lighter guide. They want a lighter rod, but when we go into the Kingfish rods, we're using a little bit heavier guide. But these are all special actions, seven foot, seven fours uh, on the Kingfish stuff. We also have a couple different rods in there. We actually had a Prospect rod, um, which is kind of designed for the, the sailfish guys for holding. So if they're holding a, a rod all day, it actually makes it feel very light in their hands. Um, so with that, like I said, five-year warranty. Uh, we have boat rods. We have kingfish rods, sailfish rods, a Prospect rod. And on the boat rods, those both come in spinning and casting actions uh, on, that, uh, uh, on that as well. With that, this whole series is going to be available in October. So be prepared for the, the good fishing season. Um, and uh, I'll let Alex kind of step into the next line of rods that we're talking about. Alrighty guys, uh, next rod series we're going to be talking about is our Harrier Jigging series. We actually have two new additions to that family this year. The first is going to be our Harrier Slow Pitch Rod. A uh, very lightweight jigging rod if you guys are familiar with the slow pitch fishing. Uh, very popular in Japan, something that's starting to catch on in the US. Um, so we're kind of getting ahead of that and launching some slow pitch rods. These are going to be family priced at $199, so very affordable for a slow pitch rod. They're available in 6'6 six, six lengths. Uh, we make a medium, a medium heavy, a heavy, and also an extra heavy. So depending on the weight of the jig, we got a rod for every different scenario. These also come with a five-year warranty against any manufacturer's defects. Uh, very nice to have that five-year warranty. These have our X45 technology and then also that HVF blank technology that Mark was just talking about. So all in all, a very nice lightweight jigging rod. We do have some jigs that we're going to be introducing tomorrow that match perfectly with these slow pitch Harrier rods. Um, so keep an eye out for those as well. If you guys are looking to pick one of the new Harrier slow pitch rods up, these are going to be arriving in late July. Alrighty, and then in addition to the Harrier slow pitch rod, we have a Harrier X rod. So this is going to be more of a heavy duty jigging rod, good for the heavier jigs. Also can be used as a boat rod or a bait rod, drop back rod, anything like that. So a lot more versatile than our standard Harrier or the slow pitch rod. You'll notice a longer foregrip here, you're going to get more power out of that so you can pull on a little bit larger fish. Um, does have the nice double locking Fuji reel seat, um, which you saw on the Proteus wind rods I was talking about. The Fuji Fazlite guides. 
These are going to retail for $139.99. They do have a five-year warranty as well. Um, they do have a nice kind of hybrid butt cap here, so it's not going to kill yourself. Um, but you can also put this in a gimbal and fight a large fish. Um, so very lightweight, heavy-duty jigging rod. Good for those heavier jigs, but also a boat rod. All right, thanks, Alex. <clears throat> So uh, while we were also down in Florida, as we were talking about offshore fishing and we we're talking about kingfish, sailfish, and boat rods and stuff, um, we spent a lot of time, too, talking to a lot of the inshore guides down there. Um, and literally, we went around the, the whole state of Florida, east coast, west coast, around the tip, uh, and really wanted to make a great rod, really designed for uh, the east coast uh, inshore angler. And this is the new TD Soul Rods. I'll kind of spin around so you guys can possibly see the logo. It is kind of difficult in the light here. Uh, very cool looking, great looking blank, um, kind of goes into kind of a gold and blue. And if you want to know what TD Soul is, that's Team Daiwa and Soul stands for sun. So it has that kind of cool sunburst. If you pop this thing out in the sunlight, especially in the Florida sun, it's going to look great. Uh, so over and above the appearance and the looking great of, of the rod, um, we ended up using our HVS high volume fiber uh, graphite. Um, like I told you in the past rods and Alex has mentioned some things, it's a proprietary uh, graphite that we use. We don't use a lot of resin in it. So the rods very light, uh, that less resin allows for less bubbles. So less fatigue, less breaking, uh, all around great rod, uh, for fishing the inshore markets there. You can see we used a nice big hook keeper. Um, this series has many different sizes in it, um, from eight foot all the way down to seven foot. Um, and I think even a possibly a few sixes in, in there as well, but all in all, it's kind of a, an all around East coast inshore rod. And it's really designed for fishing some of the shallow waters. So a little bit different than a West coast inshore rod. This is designed for throwing, you know, baits and plugs and live bait. Um, you can see we used full, uh, really nice high grade quality cork rear grip, uh, high grade quality cork foregrip and a nice kind of gold winding chuck here. You also see on some of the models here. Uh, a rubber gimbal, um, and like Alex said on those rods, same thing. It's if you want to put it in a light belt, a belly belt, or something like that, you can. If you're pulling on a tarpon or a big jack or something like that, this rod's going to come with a five-year warranty on it. So it is a, a rod series with a great warranty. Um, I do want to say something on the the eight-foot rod models. We have a, an eight-foot heavy, an extra heavy, and XXH. So all the eight-foot models come in both cork or they come in EVA, and we did that because a lot of guys that are fish and snook or tarpon, they, they have their preferences in, in that category to go with either a cork rod or an EVA. We wanted to make sure that we made everybody happy in the Florida market for this. So this is a big step for us. Great rod. This rod's going to be available here uh, probably the end of July. So it's coming in probably this month, um, but really great rod. This is the new TD Soul by Daiwa inshore model, really designed for the East Coast. Does have some crossover in the Southwest and stuff too and up the Eastern seaboard, but TD Soul by Daiwa. Alrighty, thanks Mark. Yeah, that uh, TD Soul Rod series is going to be great for the entire Gulf market and Florida market. Really excited to see some rods specific for those markets. Uh, the next series we're going to be talking about is a new surf rod we're introducing. Team Daiwa Surf or TD Surf. Uh, this is a really good looking rod. It has that kind of concrete gray look to it. Um, very popular in the industry right now. Uh, very slim uh, grip, you can see. Very lightweight rod. These are going to be retailing from 179 to 189. We're going to make these in a seven foot rod all the way up to a 12 foot rod. Nice thing about these is they are a 50 50 split. What that means is the rod is split in half. So you get two nice sections that'll fit easily in your car or store easily at home. If you guys are fishing those longer 11 and 12 foot rods, um, these have X 45 technology as well. So what that does is it eliminates the blank twist. So for the surf guys, that's really important. You're going to get a nice, straight, accurate cast. And then if you do, do hook into a big species, uh, you're not going to get have, have any rolling in the blank when you're fighting that fish. Uh, these also have Fuji Fazlite guides, very high-end guides, lightweight. Uh, and these are actually in stock now. So if you guys are looking for a new surf rod, check out the TD Surf Rods in stock, shipping to dealers now. All right, looks like we got one more rod on the table. Um, I'm actually going to step out of the saltwater market here. We're going to kind of get a little bit into the bass market. And this is kind of a, a new added line uh, or, or series uh, to the current Tatula rods out there. This is the new Tatula swim bait rod. Um, we did two of them in the swing. We did a 7.3 
uh, and a 7.9 swim bait rod. And this rod really matches up really nice um, with the reel that we talked about yesterday, which is the new Tatula 300 with the T-Wing system. Um, if you're into throwing big swim baits, these are the rods for it. Um, X45 construction, so it's not going to get that ovalization. That's what the blank construction out of. Our high volume fiber plus with our Nano Plus uh, resin in there as well. And what Nano Plus resin is, it, it really reduces any type of uh, bubbles or gas bubbles in the actual resin itself, um, which allows us to use a lot less resin and you won't see any type of failures. That X45, on the other hand, gives you that ability to make a good cast, use a heavyweight, thin blank, and it doesn't oval out. So um, really, really good good system here as far as uh, uh, the componentry on this rod. Uh, we're using our Fazlite guides on this here. You can see that we have uh, kind of a cool badge. This is our Tatula Spider on there. Um, what you're going to notice, though, between the 7.3 and the 7.9 rod um, is kind of the handle configuration. So uh, this is a 7.3. I don't have a 7.9 with me. Uh, this has kind of the standard reel seat. Um, you've got a split grip. The 7.9 uses a little bit bigger reel seat. You may use a little bit bigger uh, reel on it, but it, what it does is that when you're, you're throwing a big swim bait, so like a, you know, a bigger HUD or something much bigger, triple trout or something of that nature, it gives you a little bit more um, like kind of leverage on holding the reel with the bigger reel seat um, on the 7.9 because you tend to use a little bit bigger bait um, and a full rear grip. But both I said, a 7.3, 7.9, uh, to tool a bass rod, this is a swim bait model. There's two of them, um, and they're going to match perfect with our 300. This rod's actually available now, so you'll be able to find it at your local tackle stores pretty darn quick. Uh, MSRP is going to route 189 to 199, and it does have a five year warranty when it comes to that. Um, guys, um, I, we really want to appreciate you guys kind of coming in. We're going to kind of go through here and kind of go through some of the questions that are coming back and forth. So, um, with that being said, I'm going to kind of step out and we're going to kind of go through our first set of questions or organizing them right now. Thank you guys. Alrighty. So yeah, if you guys have questions, please, uh, hop on our YouTube page or our social media pages and ask away. We're going to take some questions now. Uh, the first question coming in is, what's the best setup for big bluefin? So on the West Coast here in California, we have a uh, nice sampling of the big bluefin. We've been fishing the Saltiga lever drags for those big bluefin recently. Uh, the Saltiga 50 to 60 size is going to be what you want. And then you're going to want to match that up with one of the new Proteus rods. So either the 7 foot extra extra heavy or that new rail rod we have coming out, that 7 foot 4 extra extra heavy. So depending on what you're doing, if you're bait fishing, flying the kite, or fishing some of our heavier SK jigs, that'll depend what size reel and what size rod you want to fish. Uh, but in general, you're going to want a Saltiga lever drag 50 to 60 size with a Proteus 7 foot or 7 foot 4 extra extra heavy or extra 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 heavy. Um, you're going to want to be fishing our J-Braid Grand somewhere between 80 and 100 pound braid for that. Um, so that'd be the ideal setup for our big bluefin we have on the west coast right now. All right, got another questions all lined up here. Which TD sole for lightweight speckle trout setup and what reel? Good question. So on the TD soles, um, if, if you're using, um, uh, throwing, I say any type of like plugs or anything, um, it depends on what type of plug you're using. A lot of people like to use a, a bait casting reel, one of our smaller bait casting reels and a seven foot rod, maybe a medium, medium heavy. Uh, so you get a good cast out of it. Um, or if you like to make a little bit longer cast, fish your outside of ways, go to one of our six, uh, our seven, six rods. Now, as far as reel is going to go, as far as, uh, on the bait casting side, uh, our new Coastal SV that we brought out last year, that's a great reel. So I'm going to suggest on the bait casting side, a Coastal SV. Um, on the spinning side, um, guys, that's up to you guys. But, I mean, you can go with either a back bay. You can go with one of the ballistics that Zion. Um, you can go with uh, one of the smaller BGMQs that we talked about yesterday. So a lot of different reels will work really good for the TD soles, just kind of depending on uh, what you're going to do and, and what fits into your price point. But um, the whole TD sole lineup is going to be great for all anglers. It comes in a good price point range, um, about 129 So you want to try and match up a reel that's in that range. Okay. All righty, a couple more questions coming in. Uh, we did have someone ask if we have any freshwater bait casting reels that we're releasing this year. Yesterday, actually, we did a live video on all the new reels that we're launching this year. So if you guys missed that, please check it out. It is on our YouTube channel or social media. 
It's also on our new website, so you can check out all the products. We launched over 30 products, rods, reels, line, lures, and those are all available to view now on our new website. Alrighty, with that being said, we have another question coming in. What are the blue guide rings on some of the rods like Proteus? That's a great question. Those are our Fuji Fazlite guides. We use them on most of our saltwater rods. We are using those on the new Tatula swimbait rods as well. It's a very durable guide that Fuji builds, very lightweight, um, kind of a good guide all around for the saltwater market. It's not gonna rust, uh, great for any braided lines. So that's what you're seeing on those new Proteus rods, both the Proteus Boat and the Proteus Win. They do have the Fuji Fazlite guides on them. Okay, uh, another TD Soul question. Okay, which TD Soul rod for tarpon? All right, um, we've got about three different rods in the tarpon lineup, depending on uh, what you're doing and what bait uh, that you're using for. But the tarpon rods that we designed, we have an eight footer, we've got a heavy, um, an extra heavy, and a double X heavy. Um, and like I was mentioning on, on those rods, we actually did them in both cork or EVA. Personally, I like the cork, but there's plenty of anglers out there uh, that like the EVA. So you have that ability. Um, you know, there's some other things as far as, I, I, I'm mainly talking about some of the bigger tarpon and stuff and some of the fish under the bridges and stuff, but you can use some of the six, seven, six rods in the medium heavy, depending on the grade tarpon. But for bigger tarpons, eight foot heavy, extra heavy, or XXH in either the cork or the EVA is going to be great for you. So but great question. Thank you very much. Alrighty, next question is, which Proteus rod works best for the Lexa 400? So if you're fishing a Lexa 400, specifically on the West Coast here, a uh, great all-around reel. You can use that for multiple different applications. You can use that for bait fishing. You can use that for throwing surface iron. So as far as a rod to match up, I'd recommend one of the new Proteus rods or Pro Proteus wind rods. If you want an all-around rod, I'd recommend the eight foot medium heavy or heavy. You can do pretty much everything in our you know, California market with that rod. If you want one specifically for throwing lures, you'd probably want to go with that 810. You're going to get a little bit more distance, uh, but somewhere between a seven, six and eight foot, either medium, medium heavy or heavy would work perfectly with the Lexa 400. All right. Another question. What reel matches best with the dark water series? Well, that's great because uh, we, we obviously, when we develop stuff, we develop our reels first. Um, and then we try and find rods to match. And that's why we spent so much time in Florida with a lot of the new reels that we were doing and, and some of the new spinning stuff. So we came up with the reels and we needed to find rods that would match up real nicely. Um, so my suggestion is, there's a couple of different suggestions depending on what you're doing um, with the dark water rods. Um, if you're using any of the spinning rods, um, yesterday we introduced the new uh, Daiwa BG MQ uh, with the MQ technology frame and everything on it, that's going to work great. All different sizes. You can do from a, you know, a 2,500 all the way to a 20,000, uh, depending on ro what rod you're working with uh, in the dark water series. Um, now, in that series as well, we also have our, our sailfish rods, and we did introduce new king, or sorry, new sailfish rods in Saltiga, or reels, and we did that, and we needed a rod to match. So if you're using the 50 Saltiga, that matches out very well with either 7 foot or 7 4, uh, 7 6 uh, dark water rod. Um, we also make a, a little bit bigger reel too. We make the 60 sailfish reel. So those all work really well for that. So any of the new lever drag reels work really well on the sailfish side to fit into that sailfish model. Um, now, if you are a star drag fan for the kingfish guys, um, you can. Uh, at a rod that's about 179 price point, you can go with either one of our Saltzes or Saltiga Star Drags. Those match up really nice on that side. If you're a Kingfish guy, uh, they tend to like the Star Drags better. But we do have plenty of reels to match up with all those rods. And that 179 price point that the uh, uh, Dark Waters are going to come into right in that range is going to be a great setup for any type of angler, either a novice or a high-end angler. That's what I would suggest, any of the new reels that we kind of talked about. Alrighty, it looks like we got a question from Felipe. Thanks for asking a question. Do we have rods designed specifically for kayak fishing? What works best? Yeah, we have a couple of different rods you could use for kayak fishing. One of the new rods that I would recommend is gonna be that Harrier X rod. You can use it as a jigging rod, but also as a boat rod, so it's super versatile. Also super lightweight. First thing you notice when you pick up that new Harrier X rod is how light that rod is. 
due to that HVF technology that we have in that blank. We also make that rod in a 5.8 all the way up to a 7 foot rod. So we got something for kind of all the different applications where, you, where whether you want a little bit shorter rod for jigging or a little bit longer rod, one of those seven foot medium heavy or heavy boat rods would be perfect uh, for your kayak fishing needs. Thank you. All right, we have a, oh, a bass question. We like that. So to a bass swim bait rod um, or one of issues to two elite swim bait rods with the new Tatula 300. Um, well, both are great rods and, uh, um, both are two different types of rods too. So, uh, they both work good for that 300. No doubt about it. That reel is going to be great for, for throwing swim baits, uh, of like, but the, the main difference is when you get between the Tatula and the Tatula Elite, the Tatula Bass and the Tatula Elite is the Tatula Bass rods are cork handles. So they're more traditional, more cork handle. They have a different feel, um, than the elite rods as the elites are kind of more of a JDM. You're using an EVA handle, a little bit different feel. Um, actions are very similar. Um, we, we tend to utilize, you know, we've got Ishmael, one of the best fishermen out there and a lot of his technology and, and stuff is, is a little bit different, but, um, also when we get into like that seven, nine, I was talking to you about, uh, when it comes to the, uh, uh, Tatula bass rods, that 7.9 has that bigger reel seat uh, that you won't find on issues. A lot of issues rods that he made are designed by him and for him. We did this series a little bit more general for the general public. So, um, but the main two differences is, are, it's going to be number one, the cork handle. You're going to see that right away um, versus the, you know, softer EVA handle. And that's all a personal preference um, when it comes to that rod. Alrighty, next question is, uh, a lot of your rods have the X45 technology. What is the benefit to that? So our X45 technology, what that does is it reduces blank twist. So it's good for casting. It's going to give you a more accurate cast. So we offer that in a lot of our surf rods where you're making long casts, new Tatula swim bait rods, but also in some of our jigging rods as well. Now, when you're pulling on a fish, that's also going to reduce the blank twist. So you're not going to have your rod rolling as much. So a lot better experience when you're pulling on big fish or making long casts. All right, we got a gentleman by the name of Dean. What combo would be good for King Mackerel, Blackfin, uh, with a Kage MQ? Uh, oh, cool, going super lightweight. I like where your head's at there. Um, you know, that, that's a good, good scenario there. Um, I would probably go with, I mean, you can use one of the TD Soul rods or you can use one of the, our back bay rods, either or. It's going to work really good with the Kage MQ. Um, it, it depends uh, on, on what you're tossing. If you're dropping live bait back, I would go with like a medium or medium light. Um, if you're throwing a little bit heavier lure, um, we got some lures coming out later uh, uh, tomorrow, actually, that we're going to talk to you guys about. I go to like a medium heavy and I tend to like 7.6 rods. So any 7.6 rods in that range give you a little bit longer cast get it away from the boat, um, and boats are going to work really well. And that Kage MQ is going to really work good, well in the salt water. Uh, it's got the mag seal. It's, you know, made out of Zion. It's going to be a great reel for you there. But, Dane, thank you very much for the question. I hope I answered it well for you. Um, but we appreciate your questions. All righty. Next question refers to some of our surf rods that we offer. So we do offer the rods in a 70-30 split and a 50-50 split. So we have a question wondering to know uh, what the difference between the two different splits is. Uh, so a 70-30 rod is gonna feel more like a one-piece rod. The 50-50 split is gonna be a lot easier to store, um, a lot easier to manage. You can throw it in the trunk of your car, um, store it at home a lot easier, versus that 70-30 split that we offer on like our new coastal surf rod. That's gonna be a little bit more like a one-piece rod. So that's the main difference between uh, the 70-30 split and the 50-50 split and why we kind of offer it in both uh, the 70, 30 and the 50, 50. All right. We've got a Kingfish. I'm sorry. Yeah. Is it a kite? Oh, kite question for sailfish. Okay. So which dark water rod would I, would you fish, um, the kite for sailfish? So, um, we actually have four different rods, actually five different rods in there. Uh, for the, for the sailfish on a kite, we did a seven footer and we did a seven, six. Now we did a medium and a medium heavy um, and they're both somewhat softer parabolic so you can get that reel get it out of the clip get it in reel it in have that fish going one way or the other um, they work really nice for that and like i said we spent a lot of time in florida to really develop the best kite rods in the market for the price um, so 
I would suggest, depending on what your preference is, either the 7.6 or the 7-foot, um, but one of those rods. And just so you guys know, uh, in that series, the, the actual sailfish rods have an SF on the back, so it stands for sailfish. Uh, they do have a different action than the kingfish rods or the boat rods, so you'll see that. Also, it'll have the logo on there as well. So 7-foot or 7.6 rods going to work great for you there. Um, we also do a rod, too, for a prospect rod. So if you are a sailfish person and you got the kites out, prospect rod's one of those rods that you kind of just drop back and hold. It's made to be extremely lightweight, um, and that's kind of what we've done on the prospect side of that as well. So. All righty. Next question. Someone wants to know what the best setup for surface iron fishing is. Uh, for surface iron, you're going to want a long rod in the Proteus series. We offer a 810 rod in both the Proteus and Proteus Win Rod series. So that's the rod that you're going to want to use. As far as the reel to match up with it, you're going to want to fish a Saltis, Saltiga, or Lexa. So in the Saltis and Saltiga Star Drag family, I like to fish either the 35, which is a little bit more narrow, or the 40 size. And then in the Lexa, you're going to want the 400 size, either the Win or the HD. That HD does have those stainless steel gears, so I'd recommend that one. And then as far as line, uh, you're gonna wanna be fishing either braided line or monofilament. On the braided side, you're gonna wanna fish either 50 or 65 J-Braid Grand or four carrier. Um, somewhere in the 65 pound test is what I like to use. All right, we got a popping cork question for redfish. What TD sole rod would work for redfish using a popping cork? Um, on a popping cork, my suggestion would be one of the seven six rods. I would suggest a medium over medium heavy. Um, you know, if you're really good at throwing a popping cork, you gotta let those fish eat it. You can't just pull it away from them. So that medium rod allows the, the rod to suck down a little bit so you can reel through them. Um, plus that seven six will give you that extra distance to get that popping cork away a little bit further. Um, if you're fishing around any type of tulies or mangroves, you can get it right back up and underneath there. But a 7.6 medium is kind of what I would suggest when it comes to fishing a popping cork. Um, and that's just so you, the timing so you don't miss fish. All righty, Dean is asking another question. Dean, thanks for asking your questions. Uh, viewers out there, if you guys have any questions, feel free to chime in. We'll keep taking some questions here. So Dean wants to know, what's a good rod for the BG14000 uh, live bait fishing in Southern California? So BG14000, that's a great size. You can do pretty much everything with that. I'd fish that on a Proteus rod, somewhere between a seven foot rod and an eight foot rod. If you're mostly bait fishing, uh, you can fish a little bit shorter rod, either a seven foot or seven six. Somewhere between a medium heavy and a heavy would be perfect. So check out the Proteus or Proteus wind rod in seven foot or seven six, medium, heavy, or heavy. All right, I guess when we were talking a little bit about prospect rod, we had a question that says, what is a prospect rod? Uh, and what is it located, at, what rod is it for the, the dark water series? So um, a prospect rod, um, and this is the time that I was spending uh, down in Florida. And you know, you've got the guys um, that are, you know, fishing four rods or, or six rods, you know, they're fishing kites. And you got to have that one guy that's got a flat line off the back. Um, and you want a rod that that gentleman's going to have to be holding that rod for a long period of time sometimes. So it's not in a kite. It's sitting in the boat. You're fly lining your bait back. Um, or if you're slow trolling, you can do a drop back on it. But you're physically going to be holding it a long time. So we actually designed this prospect rod at seven foot. Um, it's got much lighter guides. It's a lighter type of blank so the overall blanks lighter the eva that we've used is a higher density it's lighter so the whole blank is much lighter than we use in say any of the kite rods so it's seven foot lighter guides it's designed to be held while the guys are fishing the kite you can just drop it back so that's what a prospect rod is and in order to do the series right we wanted to make sure that we had everything that any true good tournament angler had when it came to kite fishing was in this series um, between the looks the price point everything else in the right action so that's what we did prospect rod seven foot um, in the dark water series all righty uh, what is the difference between a harrier rod and a harrier x rod great question so we have three harrier rods now we have our standard harrier jigging rod which is a good all-around jigging rod we offer that in both the six six and seven foot and then we have our new Harrier slow pitch rods, which are all going to be six, six foot lengths. 
Uh, good for slow pitch fishing. We have some new slow pitch jigs that you'll see tomorrow. And then we have our Harrier X rods, which are gonna be the most heavy duty Harrier rod that we offer. Those can be used as both a boat rod and a jigging rod. Those have that longer foregrip. Uh, those are a 5'8 all the way up to a 7 foot heavy rod. So good for a boat rod, jigging rod, good for those really heavy jigs and pulling on those larger species. Okay, we got another good TD, TD Soul question. Um, TD Soul, what rod would be good to fish uh, on the coast for calico bass in the TD Soul lineup on the west coast? Well, that rod actually has been very, very much designed for the east coast. We, they fish different there than here. I'm not saying you couldn't use that rod, but I don't know if you'll be totally happy because it is fairly parabolic. Um, you know, on the West Coast, we use, like I say, a very fast action. Um, so it tends to uh, bend at the tip, but it has a lot of backbone. Great for throwing baits. The TD Soul is a little bit softer. It's kind of designed for throwing light, you know, light baits, small swim baits, quarter ounce, eighth ounce. Where over here, we tend to use a lot of stuff that's like anywhere between three quarters to two ounce. So... Um, you can use it if, if I was to, to pick a rod, I would probably go with the eight foot uh, heavy, which would be a perfect or the extra heavy would work out really well, either the cork or the AVA. Um, that's more towards what we'd like to fish with um, or any of the new Proteus rods or any of the Proteus inshore rods. But for the TD Soul, probably that eight foot heavy or extra heavy. Um, it's a good looking rod in either cork or the EVA. Alrighty, next question is, what reel is perfect for jigging with the new Harrier rods? So that depends on what you're doing, what weight jigs you're using. So like with our SK jigs, we make those now from a 20 gram all the way up to a 300 gram. So if you're using those lighter jigs, you're obviously going to want a lighter rod. So you could get away with a shorter, you know, 6.6 six or 7 foot medium or medium heavy rod. Um, all the way up to those 300 gram SK jigs, you're going to want a little heavier rod. So... Uh, something like a seven foot heavy or extra heavy with those heavier rods. Uh, in the Harrier platform, like I mentioned, we make lighter rods all the way up to those heavier, heavier rods. So just make sure you're matching it up with the weight of the jig and then also the size of the fish that you're targeting. Uh, looks like we've got a Northeast question. Well, we could have a Northwest question too. What reel matches best for TD surf uh, for fishing stripers? Now, obviously um, that depends on... The length of rod you want, where the fish are located when you make your cast. Um, and my suggestion, I really like, you know, 10 or 11 footers. Um, it depends on what bait you're throwing. So do you go with a medium or medium heavy or heavy? Um, but in, in all actuality, 10 foot or 11 foot heavy is, is a really good, you know, uh, size rod for that. And to match up the right wheel reel for that, uh, like we introduced yesterday, the Daiwa BGMQ. Um, I say either a 5,000 or 6,000 size is great, depending on what pound test braid you're using. You know, 20 pound, 30 pound, or 40 pound. If you want to go to a little bit bigger reel, that works even better because you got a bigger arbor. The line's going to come off further. So, um, but me personally, I think a 6,000 or a 5,000 with 30 pound on it's going to be great. Do a lot of fishing uh, in Cabo uh, for roosters and stuff, and that's kind of the size reels that I use down there. But the BGMQ with TD Surf, good price point. They match up well. It's going to look really good together as well. Alrighty, looks like uh, one of our customers out there has a Surtate 5000. Wants to know what jigging rod would match nicely with that Surtate 5000. That's a great reel you have there. That's very versatile size, one of my favorite sizes uh, in the Surtate family. You can pull in a lot of large species with that. I would go with a medium heavy or heavy somewhere in the six, six to seven foot. And you could match that up with either the Harrier rod or the Harrier X. So if you want it to be more of an all around road, uh, rod, I'd go with the Harrier X. If you want it more uh, catered just to jigging, I'd go with our normal Harrier ser series that we offer. All right, looks like we're gonna take one more good question here. Why does the Kingfish dark water rods have a slick butt? So. Uh, while spending the, the years that I have down in Florida, and at least in the last se series here, the last nine or so trips that I was down there last year, um, talking to a lot of the kingfish market and the, and the tournament anglers, they really, really wanted a slick butt in it. And, and the reason for that is that when you're, you know, slow trolling or trolling for kingfish and you get bit on the troll for the most part, 
Um, you can actually pull it out of the actual uh, rod holder very easily. Um, EVA or rubber tends to get stuck there. Uh, the carbon fiber made it a little bit lighter, makes it look better. It's easier to pull out. Even guys fishing in the kite, um, it comes out of the, any type of rod holders very easy and quick. Uh, and sometimes you need to do that. But uh, those are all good questions. Uh, we've had some great questions today. Um, like I said, I know it's not easy with us social distancing and running back and forth. It makes it difficult. Um, tomorrow's going to be another really good day. I'm going to let Alex here come in and say something as well. But I want to appreciate all your guys' questions. we got some great questions. Uh, tomorrow we're going to end up doing uh, line, new lures, the, some of the new accessories and bags. Uh, it's going to be a great day. I appreciate everybody that came in yesterday uh, and talked about reels. All the good questions today on rods and reels. It's, it worked out very well. Um, with that being said, like I said, Mark Mills, field marketing manager here. I want to say thank you very much for all the questions. Alex, I'll let you come in and say a few words. Yep. Thank you guys for watching today. Tune in tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Uh, we'll be going over the rest of the products that we launched. And then if you guys have any questions or um, want to check out the products more, go to our new product showcase website, Daiwa New Product Showcase, or check out our YouTube channel for more videos. Thank you.